I'll let people know that we're just working to finish up a couple things. All right, folks, welcome today. We are just about ready to get started. Um, so bear with us while we get the Facebook Live thing set up and we'll get started in just a moment. All right. Okay, thanks everyone for being here. Um, and this is our um, third session in our Empowering Small Businesses program series. Uh, today, Francie Henriksen will be presenting about digital marketing for small business. I'm Catherine Barnett, adult programming librarian at Chillicothe Public Library. And this program series is supported by a library's lead with digital skills um, grant through the American Library Association and the Public Library Association sponsored by Grow with Google. We are hosting these events weekly through the end of August, and we hope they'll provide some useful touch points for you as you nav navigate through these uncertain days. Each session features a re regional expert who will share tips to help your business face the future with resilience, particularly in regards to digital and online skills. And that is not all. At the end of Pardon me. At the end of the series, we'll have a prize drawing for a one-year membership for the Chillicothe Chamber of Commerce and um, for a session with one of our presenters, um, along with some other goodies. So make sure to fill out the survey at the close of the event today for a chance to win. And even if you've entered before, you are welcome to enter once every time you attend a session. Before we get started, I'd like to go over a few housekeeping items. At any time during the webinar, you can submit your questions for Francie. If you're tuning in through Zoom, just click on the Q&A in the control panel at the bottom of the screen and type your question into the Q&A box. If you're watching on Facebook, type your question into the comments. Francie will address as many questions as time allows. We will be recording this webinar and we'll share the link at chillypld.org. To get us started, I've invited local business person Leanne Stickle to briefly share her story as it relates to today's topic of um, digital marketing for small businesses. So, Leanne, um, go ahead and take it away. Okay, well, thank you so much, Catherine, for the introduction. I really appreciate being here. And my name is Leanne Stickle, and I am a life coach. I help people get unstuck. I help people move forward. I help people see the good and to not let life's hiccups and things that we didn't choose control us, right? And control our journey and be the boss of us. Um, so I love what I do and I'm excited to be here. Uh, one, because I'm a huge fan of Francie's and her energy and passion for helping entrepreneurs. Um, when it comes to digital marketing, I, first of all, I want to say that I love it so much because it allows us to connect with people all over the world. Digital marketing to me is showing up, it's telling your story, it's being relatable. Marketing is building relationships, right? It's people want to buy from people and they need to get to know you. 
right? They want to buy from people that are like them. And so my digital marketing primarily has been in social media. And social media is a place that I can share my story, my journey, my life, my kids, and it helps me to relate to all my customers, my clients, and it helps them to see that their journey is so similar, right? And that I can act, I might actually be able to help them. So I like to think of my goal is to get people from A to Z. And marketing really is me introducing that journey. And so it's me getting you maybe from A to C. And it's giving you those first couple steps and helping you to see, oh, there's light at the end of this tunnel. And this person, this life coach can help me get to that Z. And so I just, to me, digital marketing is where it's at because it's people are hanging out in social media, they're checking their inboxes, right? So when we show up in an email, um, they're popping over to a blog, they're connecting with the story, with the people. And that really, to me, is the heart of, of marketing, at least in my experience with my business. Um, so yeah, I am thrilled to be here just in front of Francie. She will, oh my goodness, share so many good tips and encourage you to show up better and smarter and more efficiently online. And that really is a place that I'm working on too. So, you know, I don't have it all figured out, but I am trying. And another thing that I wanted to hit on with my digital marketing that I feel like has been magical has been consistency. So because I show up regularly five days a week, um, then people know that I'm there, right? And then they can message me and connect with me. And that is so much more valuable than some fancy, fancy, fancy anything, right? Like um, being able to personally ask me a question and me respond with a voice DM, like that is so powerful and that takes me 30 seconds, right? And so to me, those are all the pieces of digital marketing that I wanted to share this morning with you that are working for me. Um, my, my chronic illness is such a big part of my, my story and part of what I um, feel like connects with other clients. Um, there is the piece, the empathy piece that comes with hard parts of our story, right? And so when we can relate to others, um, there really is no better marketing. So I just want to encourage you if you're just starting out, if you're a small business, like everybody's, if you, the more real you are, the better your marketing, right? Like just show up as who you are. Like we are all different and that's what's magical. And what's amazing is that there's all these different people out there that are actually the same as us and it makes them feel like they're connected. And that's marketing, right? That got us, that I give them steps A, B, C, and then they come back for the rest of the steps. So I don't want to take any of Francie's time. I want you to learn all the things, soak up all of her knowledge and super happy to be here. If you have questions for me, I'm definitely easy to find leannstickle.com. And yeah, that's awesome. Thank you. Thanks so much, Leanne. I appreciate your, your insights there. Yeah, you're welcome. Thanks, Catherine. I would now like to introduce today's speaker, Francie Henriksen. Francie is the owner of Simply Integrated LLC, a marketing and business strategy company based out of Morton, Illinois. As the daughter of an entrepreneur, Francie is passionate about helping small business owners succeed. She holds a master's degree in business administration and a bachelor's degree in communication. Francie leads several groups of small business owners with the purpose of helping them push through challenges. These groups include Lipstick and Lattes, a networking group for Central Illinois businesswomen, the Street Team Mastermind, the Initiative Mastermind, and monthly coffee chats for business owners to meet remotely. In her downtime, Francie loves getting lost in a book in a coffee shop, jogging, and hiking with her husband, daughter, and bulldog Winston. Francie Henriksen, welcome. Thank you so much. Let me get my video started here and pull my slides up so that you all can see. Can you see that okay? I would love feedback in the chat. Um, if you wanna just type in and let me know, gosh, awesome. 
Thanks, Nick. You always show up. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, like she said, I am Francie. I run a small business and I am so excited to talk with you about how to multipurpose one piece of content across multiple channels to make the most impact for your digital marketing presence. So uh, we know the, the premise of this conversation is we know that there's so many marketing channels that can drive traffic to your presence and each one of them operates differently. We know Pinterest operates different than email marketing. There's different nuances and innuendos and um, uh, nuances. And so what I want to talk about is how do you take one piece of content and make that applicable across a lot of different channels? So there we go. So before we begin, I am more than happy to share my slides with you today. All you have to do is text the word empowered to 33777. That will let me know that you'd like to receive them. And I will send you an email later today with all of the slides. And also I have several resources and kind of how-to guides that I want to fill you up with so that you have a reference to look at and say, okay, this is exactly how I do that. We are going to talk about the what and the why, but we're really going to dive into the how today because the how is what moves the needle in your small business and will make the most impact. Um, let me pull this down. Okay. So also I'm going to be giving away three one month memberships to our initiative mastermind, which is a mastermind that gets behind rallies around supports small business owners um, in their effort to grow a better business and improve and share tips and tricks and, and just kind of apply that strategy to their business. So I have two water bottles to give away and some coffee to give away. So if you um, text 3377, I will know you on the side and I'll also enter you into win. So like she said, I'm Francie Heinrichsen. Um, just so I know, can you, is this box of faces covering up the slides? Can you see around there? I can't tell. We can see the slides. You can see the slides. Okay, so the video, the, the screens are not covering up that information. I just wanted to make sure. Okay, so um, like she said, I'm the founder of Simply Integrated and the Initiative Mastermind. I've also started an e-commerce business um, called Tink and Winston that was successful. And so I've had a really well-rounded um, idea and strategy around different business models. So I started my first business when I was seven. I went and took a free class at the library. I share this often. I took a free class at the library and then I came home and I charged all of my friends to take the same class from me. And I was hooked since then. Um, I think that my biggest accomplishment and the thing that I'm most proud of as an entrepreneur is that I've built a life I love waking up to. I look forward to getting to work every single day. So let's dive into the topic. I want to talk about the nature of small business marketing. Marketing, and the truth is that a lot of small business. Uh, let, me, let me rephrase this. There are not a lot of small businesses that do marketing really well, and there's some good reasons why. Um, you know, marketing is executed intermittently when and if the business owner has time. They're wearing so many hats. They've got to be the revenue producer. You know, they've got to they've got to move the needle in their business in so many different areas that often marketing gets pushed on the back burner. Um, I ask clients, "What does your marketing program look like?" And a lot of times they'll tell me only the social media platforms that they are on. Um, marketing is so much more than that. It's prioritized only when sales are low. So when people need those leads coming through, sales are low, I've got to get, get people through my door or on my website, that's when they tend to market. And we know that by that point, it is too late because we'll talk about it today, but customers have to go through the buying cycle. So they have to go through this psychology of coming to know, like, and trust you. We're gonna go into far more details so that you can understand how to deliver the right message at the right time to the right person. So um, it's prioritized typically only when sales are low and then little thought is given to the effectiveness of it. Oftentimes our marketing messages sound like buy my stuff, buy my stuff, buy my stuff. And little thought is given to where the lead might actually be in the buying cycle. So there's very little 
um, strategy and forethought put into crafting a message that's going to move that lead from one phase of the buying cycle into the next. So let's talk about seven roadblocks that um, business owners typically, you know, typically run into. And the reason why I want to talk about those is so you can recognize them and call them out so that they don't derail you from your intentions as a business owner. The first, um, the first roadblock is that, you know, it is difficult to identify the boundaries of the internet. The internet's seemingly endless. It's changing all the time. Um, and so those best practices are really hard to keep up with. That's intimidating as a business owner. If you encounter any of these roadblocks, go ahead and type it in the chat. I'd love to know. The second roadblock is that strategy can be effectively driven by numbers and analytics. You don't have to be a big corporation to have access to those numbers, but few people know how to read the story and translate that into decision making. The third roadblock is that it feels like you have to be everywhere all the time, and that's just not the case. Um, you probably know that you have to be where your target market is. You don't have to be on every social media platform. Um, and in fact, if your target market is not in a specific place, I wouldn't even waste my time um, building out those channels. The fourth is that businesses often don't know how to craft that appropriate message and deliver it depending on where that potential lead is, what their experience is like with your brand. The fifth is that search engine optimization and conversion optimization strategies are big drivers of organic traffic um, and conversion, but few people understand how they work. Next roadblock is that most um, effective marketing happens with a continual trial and error process. Training, analyzing, tweaking, analyzing, but most entrepreneurs don't have time for that. Um, you improve your process over time, um, and that is how you develop, you know, processes and strategies that work. But like I said, a lot of business only have time to throw up a social media post and call it a day before they move on to the next task demanding their time in their business. And the last is that often business owners feel that they have to come up with unique content for every single marketing channel. And that's not the case either. Um, repurposing is the name of the game and that's what we're gonna dive into today, the how, how to do it well and get the most bang for your buck. So let's talk about some goals that we have uh, for creating effective content. It's not enough just to check the box. If we're gonna do it, we need to do it well with the intention of driving an ROI and gaining exposure to potential new customers. So our goals in developing content should be to de develop the know, like, and trust factor with repeat touch points. Familiarity through repeat touch points is crucial. Um, Marcy talked on this yesterday, and I couldn't agree more that you build a relationship with people through your digital presence, um, the way you talk about your products, the way you reach out to them and acknowledge them as people. That is really important for marketing. The second goal is to position yourself as a thought leader on a topic and deliver value. And the third goal is to drive organic traffic from a qualified lead to a space that you control. And that phrase, space that you control, is crucial for marketing well. So um, when you only market through social media channels, you're at the mercy of Facebook, Instagram, you're at the mercy of platforms that are pay to play platforms. So they know your business, they know that you're trying to make money off of um, their platform. And so they want you to pay for ads in order to reach that organic traffic. That's a huge impediment for small business owners who don't have a budget. Um, so assuming that you can just grow a social media following in the thousand, and you'll just be successful. That's just not the case. So we've got to take a different angle. We've got to take a different approach and try to reach those touch points um, through a lot of different marketing channels to reach the same customers. Okay. So let's talk about um, planning your strategy before you dive in. Like I said, repeat touch points 
are critical. They used to say that it took seven touch points for someone to buy. Now they're saying it's closer to 21 touch points. And I believe the reason why is because people seek out brands. They seek out the targets, the crate and barrels. They seek out, you know, the um, Starbucks and they want to be in relationship with them online on multiple fronts. And so what used to be a more impactful touch point has now become more of a micro, um, such as taking just a few seconds to view a social media post and keep scrolling. That um, touch point is not going to be as effective as maybe a 30 second commercial that we all used to sit in front of the TV and watch as a family and they had our full attention. Now we have so many things grabbing at our, at our um, attention. So those touch points are crucial. Um, the second is developing rapport over time, build a loyal relationship with an audience that's primed to buy. So Jasmine Starr is a business strategist who I love. Um, she says that typically it takes four months to convert one person into one of her low price point products. And her low price point products are priced at 30 to 40. So four months she's nurturing those leads before they convert. And it's not that her, you know, it's not that her content isn't impactful. It's not that it's not resonating. It's just that it takes time to develop that no like, and trust factor. The third point for planning your strategy is to understand the buying cycle. And this is where we're going to go into D here so that you can deliver the right message to the right person at the right time. So this is my, this is my funnel. I was explaining this to so many people that I ended up just making a graphic to explain it. Okay. So your marketing channels should lead into a presence that you own, that you have control over, which is something like your, um, your website. You want to lead them to your website. Once they're there, you want to lead them where you want them to go and deliver that experience, how you want to intentionally, how you want them to come to know, like, and trust your business, what you want them to know about you, what you want them to to experience. You have complete control over that on your website. So take advantage of it and lead those marketing channels into your website. Another good place would be your email list. So they may not open every email, but they are going to see your name in their inbox and that counts as a touch point. Okay. Another one, a good one would be a webinar. So lead them into a webinar to teach them something and position you as the um, you know, the professional or the authority on that topic. So in the awareness stage, we've got four stages here, the awareness, consideration, purchase, and after sale. Some people will say that there's seven phases of the buying cycle, and that's fine. I'm just breaking these in. I'm, I'm seeing this um, for the most impact. So the awareness phase, that's where they're understanding what our value prop proposition is, who we are as a company and kind of developing that schema about how to interpret who we are, the business. Um, in the next phase, the consideration phase, that's when they actually consider buying from us. So they're doing their research at that point on, is it us they're gonna buy from or is it the competition? This um, is a really important time to lead them and help and what value proposition you do better than anyone else why you earned their dollar, their transaction over the competition. The third phase is gonna be the purchase phase. So this is the phase where buy my stuff actually works, okay? Because traveled through the know, like, and trust, they've done the research and decided that they have a pain, need, or challenge that you can um, answer. And then they're ready to purchase. So this is where buy my stuff actually works. And then the after sale. We know that people who have purchased from us are easiest and least expensive to market to. They've already developed a relationship. So it's crucial as a business owner for the sustainability of your business to keep those leads coming back through. Give them a reason to come back. Um, you know, understand what their experience is like so that if three need your product, you're already there in their inbox or in front of them when they're ready to buy. Um, so this is the buying cycle, and this is how we craft a message according to where people are in the buying cycle and deliver that message to the person at the right time. 
when it comes to conversion optimization on your website, um, you know, it's hard to tell where somebody is in the buying cycle from them entering your homepage. But for example, if they go to your about page, we know that they're in a stage. Okay. If they're on your blog, they're in the awareness stage or the consideration phase. So you wanna get them converted into an email subscriber. Um, if they're on a product page, they're in the purchase phase. So you want to eliminate website so that they stay, they get their questions answered, they engage, the more time they spend on your website, the more likely. So when I say that there's strategy behind marketing, this is what I'm talking about, crafting your message according to what is gonna help people buy or come into your circle and want to keep coming back. So the fourth thing that I want you to keep in mind as you plan your strategy um, is that even small businesses have access to data that is going to inform their decision making. Okay, so Google Analytics, Google Search Console, um, your website platform, all of these places are going to provide you numbers on what that experience is like. And so as a business owner, if you talk about ROI for research and becoming informed about how to use that data, you can massively impact the effectiveness of your messages and how you present the experience to your customers across your digital marketing platform. So if there's any place where you're really going to dive in and you're going to own that area of your business, I would recommend understanding what the numbers tell you about the experience that your customers are having. Um, Analyze, tweak, analyze, tweak. Here are some tools. Um, like I said, you're going to get these slides if you go ahead and just text me um text or i guess text the word empower to 33777 or you can take a screenshot here moving on um the fifth thing that i want you to keep in mind is that social media should be one slice of your marketing pie and for reasons that we've already discussed but i'll go into more detail so it's great for re repeat touch points it's not always great for lead generation or conversion because you're at the mercy of an algorithm um, their goal is to keep people on their platform. So the one exception to this would be that if you can tag your products in your Instagram or Facebook posts and they can purchase on that platform, that's a really good option, but not everybody can do that. So if you cannot, if you don't have access to that, I would recommend using your platforms to drive people to your website when the opportunity is there, but really just, um, really just focus on developing that relationship. DMs, responding to every single comment, you know, posting content that you know that they're already looking for and that they're interested in. We'll talk about how to do that shortly. I'm also gonna be sending out 25 ways to market your business aside from social media with the email. Um, so that will be coming too. I want to really load you up with those resources. So here's an example of marketing dispersion that you might take in your business. So email marketing, 30%. That's where you can craft this, craft your story, craft your message, you know, lead them to a space that you own, really develop that relationship with them. I would definitely recommend one-to-one -one relationship building being a big part of your marketing um, strategy. Social media, Pinterest, YouTube, um, I would recommend, you know, just depending on your specific business, be this is bigger. Um, maybe you're very video heavy and people love to watch your videos. And in that case, this piece of the pie is going to be bigger for you. But by far and large, um, you know, I would recommend social media being a, a um, smaller piece of your marketing pie. And then finally, blog content. Um, I'll go ahead and say I leaned into blog content last year and teaming up with Pinterest. In tandem, blog content with Pinterest has grown my email list from about 200 a year ago to almost a thousand subscribers at this point. So if your target market is there, you're not using Pinterest. It is a wealth of opportunity um, for driving traffic to your site. So make sure that you have a lot of different um, approaches and outlets going where your target market can come to know, like, and trust you and gain those repeat touch points. So I want to talk about marketing channel best practices. 
Um, let me check my time to make sure I stay on time. All right, so we know that each marketing channel has very different nuances to it. Um, you can't just blanket send them the same message that you send on Facebook and duplicate that on your blog, right? So let's dive in and talk a little bit about how these different marketing channels are different from one another. Um, there will be a little bit of overlap here, but I hope I can help to really clarify the approach that you should take depending on which marketing channel that you're using. So with email marketing, you want to leverage strong subject lines. This is what's going to get them to open the email. Um, strong subject lines are things that are intriguing. They're things that mention a topic you know that they want to learn about. Um, not slapping a subject line up that explains what the content is about, but more so kind of using it as an intriguing piece to get them to open. It's great for repeat touch points. Like I said, if you can get them to open, different industries have different open rates. 25% open rate is pretty good for most industries. So even landing in their inbox is powerful. Um, and a lot of people at this point don't have time to open up your email, but they'll leave it in their inbox. And that's okay too, because every time they see it, they know they want to come back to it at some point. But every time they see that, they're reminded of you and what you have to offer, even if they don't open it or read it at that time. Not everybody is going to just open or delete, right? Some people don't, but they leave it there in their inbox for later. And that's valuable too. In emails, short paragraphs. Um, I say in blog posts, no more than three sentences. I would say in your emails, probably no more than two sentences because people, most people are reading on a smartphone. So that means that the text is squeezed in and even two sentences is going to make kind of a longer looking paragraph. Big text intimidates people. So you want to make sure you break up those paragraphs, separate them where appropriate with those bold, um, those bold headers that kind of explain and draw their attention to what that paragraph is about. People skim. Nobody's going to read all of your content. People, you've got to create content for skimming so that they can get the gist of what you're trying to say by quickly moving through. Place your opt-out option at the top of your email. And here's why. Everyone says, well, I don't want people to opt out. Yeah, you do, because the alternative to that is them tagging or flagging your email spam. And that is going to have a long-term negative implication on your ability to reach people's inboxes. So don't you don't want to reach people who don't want to be in your presence. Give them the option to opt out at the top um, so that you know that you're only sending emails to people who want to hear your message. Um, the next is to incorporate a conservative mix of visuals. So some text, some visuals. I always say make your emails as long as what somebody could open and read at one play. Um, Cause that's <laughs> reality, right? We're talking about re real people here. Segmenting is really powerful. So being able to segment, and by that I mean categorizing people based on what you know their specific interests are. So if somebody downloaded XYZ PDF off of your website, you know that, you, that they're interested specifically, for me it would be SEO or opt, um, conversion optimization. So I wanna send them emails specifically about those things because I know conversion goes up when we're able to segment according to what people's interests are. Avoid spammy language. Um, you're going to get caught in the nets. Your, your emails are going to land in spam folders if you have language like um, make lots of money or um, promising success instantly, you know, those types of things. Google and each email platform, they have a way of reading the emails that are coming in. So if they deem that it's spammy based on the language that you use, your open rate is going to be lower. Um, really focus on delivering value every time you land in their inbox that should be for a specific purpose to make their lives better. Um, consistency is key, just like Leanne talked about earlier. I would say that consistency is so important across all marketing channels. Um, I encourage you to start somewhere, even with one subscriber. You've got to start somewhere. A lot of people are like, well, I don't have a lot of emails, so I'm not going to do email marketing. I'm not going to do the most powerful marketing channel in existence because I don't have any, but you have to start somewhere, okay? Even with one, 10, 100, just start. Work out the kinks, okay? Get your system going and kind of practice on those 10 people. Um, and your email and your value will build over time. And then the last thing I wanna say about email marketing is to design the experience you want each subscriber to have. 
um, and then turn that into an automation funnel so that you know that this particular email did really well, your open weights, rates were really high, your click-through rates were really high. Make sure that that goes into your email automation so every single person that comes through your list is having that same great experience. Let's talk about the nuances of a website or blog. Research is critical for content and keywords, and I'm gonna tell you how to do that a little bit later. Um, again, make it simple with short pictures, bolded headers, emphasize text with bold, underline, italicized, and then with bold, bolded lists as well so that people can skim your content. Include branded downloads so that when they reference that download, right, they're coming in contact with your brand over over and over. Link internally to pages on your website. This is how Google finds out about what your content is about. So that hyperlink text should have optimized keywords and it should refer on your website. Again, you want to map out what you want that buying cycle to look like and that pathway that is most optimal for taking a um, lead, converting them into a customer. And then you want to link your pages accordingly. You want to contact site owners that you refer to and say, hey, I mentioned you in this blog post, you may want to link to it. Who doesn't want to know that they're mentioned in a blog post? And then if all of the stars align, they'll link to your content and you will get credit for that in the Google algorithm. Um, de deliver you, teach them something that's important for keeping them coming back to a website or blog. Incorporate embedded videos. Again, you want to keep them on your website as long as possible, and videos are a fantastic way to do that. They're great engaging. If Google knows they're clicking and they're sitting there watching a video, they're going to assume the longer they spend on your website, the better the experience that they're having. So use videos, embed them. Don't, don't point them to YouTube. Go ahead and embed the video into your um, website that, so that they stay on the website and they continue reading the blog post after they're done. Okay. Um, Google has over 200 components of the algorithm and each one of them tells them about how the experience is for the users. And the better the experience, the more those signals are checked, the more organic traffic they're going to send to your website because they know that you're going to deliver a good experience. Um, lead visitors where you want them to go. I've said that several times. Eliminate distractions. Keep them on your website as long as possible. So if you don't have to link, don't, don't link to non-converting websites. If, if it's not your product page or a page that invites them into a discovery call with you, I would think very critically about linking outward from your website. Okay, you always wanna keep them there as long as possible. And if you don't tell them where to go next, they'll leave. Um, and then give them a reason to come back. So do blog series, um, do, you know, uh, know that maybe once a month you put out a new guide for them. Um, let them know those things so that they keep coming back. Social media is so Marcy's jam, so I'm not gonna go into how to do it well, that um, portion of your, your marketing channel dispersion. But again, consistency, engage with the audience, and then um, point those users to a place that you have control over. For Pinterest, I told you how much I love Pinterest. It's been a really big game changer for me. Infographics are big, step-by-step -step how to's, even the color that you use on your pins. Um, there's science behind doing it well. Um, Tailwind is really great. So talk about nuances, man. You post one or two times to Facebook. For Pinterest, you can share up to 100 pins per day. You can get involved with tribes. Really, there's a lot of strategy behind it. So if you're going to be blogging, you might as well reach the, the audience that's already on the Pinterest search engine. That's right. It's a search engine. It's not just um, a social media outlet. It's, it's definitely a search engine, and therefore, it has so much power. So now I want to get into the four steps to maximizing content. Um, and this is the how of how you do it. Okay. I want to quick check this question that I saw to make sure. I saw there was a Q&A in here. Catherine, do you know what that question says? Yes, we actually had two questions. Um, Amanda asked, um, both of them had to do with analytics. Um, okay. Amanda, how much time per day or week should be allocated for analyzing marketing data? Good question. I would say initially it's going to take you more time to get to know, 
to, to really understand what those data pieces tell. So I would say really dig in and maybe for a month you're just going to spend, you know, a, an hour a week becoming familiar with what analytics are most important for your specific industry conversion target market and then after that the beauty is that you know google analytics can send you reports and it may be five minutes a week to understand how your content is performing data box is a really good tool that will take all of your digital presence and combine it into one dashboard so that you can see trends you know what content was posted on that specific day and you saw a spike in leads to your website so um, I wouldn't say that there's a specific amount of time, hard and fast rule for that, but get familiar with it initially. And then after that, it should be a process that, you know, you can automate it so that that information is delivered to you and you can check it at a stoplight. Thank you. And then we also had a question from Nick about analytics. Um, he says the four month acquisition info you shared is good to know. Does customer acquisition calculations, um, time, money, et cetera, come from the available analytics? Can you speak to acquisition effectiveness slash efficiency tweaking based on analytics? Um, please give a tweak example. Sure. So for example, um, you can look to see what your repeat numbers are. So people who are coming back to your website who have already visited and they're coming back. So that's a really in good indication. Um, you can set up goals in Google Analytics. So you can say, I want this specific goal to be achieved. If it's a checkout, if it's an email subscriber, you can designate what that goal is. And then you can look to see what the pathway is that people are taking, where they're falling short, and where they're actually completing that goal. Um, so that would be my recommendation for that. And then can you speak to acquisition effectiveness? For sure. So an example of a tweak is abandoned cart rate. So let's say you have a, a really high abandoned cart rate and you are going to you're going to find out that a lot of people are leaving maybe because your shipping rates are too high. They're leaving on the page that they find out how much it's going to cost to ship and they can go to Amazon and get shipping for free. So maybe you make some tweaks at checkout to you lower your free shipping threshold. Okay. See if that makes a difference. Check your, your abandoned cart rates. Or maybe people are getting to the product page and they're clicking to something that you have linked that's not a converting page. Okay, so then I, I was finding out that a lot of people didn't understand that the, the downloads on my website are absolutely free because they actually have to go through a checkout process, but they're zero dollars, okay? So what I did is I embedded a video at checkout to help them understand what that process looked like. I can see how many times that video is being watched because it's a YouTube video, and I saw my abandoned cart rates going down, and that's funny to say because they're free products, right? But I saw the abandoned cart rate going down at that point and my email subs subscribers going up. So you got to look and look at the problem and then look to see what analytics tell you that you can over time mark those trends. I hope that answered your question. Okay, um, so I want to get into the, the how. This is the, the needle moving. This is the important point. Um, let's talk about the how of duplicating or um, repurposing this content. Duplicating is not the right word and I should emphasize that because you don't necessarily want to duplicate content across different channels. You want to take that same piece of content and repurpose it across channels. So let's talk about how to do that. Um, you really want to nail down your buyer persona and a lot of people think that a buyer persona is just the, the basic demographic information and they tell me the, the age, the income level, the gender, and where they live. And what I'm talking about when we talk about buyer personas, um, let me give you an example. I've got three different marketing target market segments in my business. I've got DIY Dolly, I've got Passionate Pearl, and I've got Full Scale Fiona. A DIY Dolly can become a Passionate Pearl who can become a Full Scale Fiona, okay? So I really strategize how I will funnel these types of customers in through my business, what their average value is as a customer to my business, and a buyer persona is gonna sound more like this, okay? Passionate Pearl runs an established company and she's ready to be all in. She has the financial means to begin outsourcing some services while managing others on her own. Pearl is ready to take her company from operational to lucrative. She's ready to cut out the fat, lean up the process, and have effective SOPs in place. Her propensity to spend is somewhat flexible. 
She understands the value of investing back into her business. She's open to ideas about how to integrate new marketing practices, but she's also capable of producing her own ideas. Okay, this is only half of my, my buyer persona for Passionate Pearl. I'm gonna stop there because you get the point, but I want you to go into deep detail about who it is that you're trying to reach so that you can speak their language, okay? So that is the first step. You want to figure out who they are, where they shop, what keeps them up at night, what they scroll on their phone, what flavor gum they choose. Find out absolutely everything that you can about them so that you can get into their world, okay? The next thing that you wanna do is brainstorm content topic ideas. And if you take nothing away from this pre presentation except what I'm about to say, I will consider it a success. We, as business owners, need to go through a mindset shift, okay? Because so many business owners I know think about content. And when they think about creating content, they think, what do I know about that the audience will find interesting, okay? What do I know about that the audience will find interesting? And we need to flip that on its head, okay? We need to go through a mindset shift so that we start to think, how can I find out about what the audience is already looking for and align my expertise with those topics, okay? If your content is not effective, it's probably because you're thinking more so example number one. Okay, so let's shift to how can I find out about what the audience is already taking to the search engines to look for, Pinterest, YouTube, Google, and how can I align my expertise with that topic? So when you brainstorm content, I want to look to see what's already doing well. Look on Pinterest, look on Google, look on YouTube, type in a very general term that has to do with your zone of genius okay and i want you to look to see just at this point you're just looking to see what content is doing well okay and write down those topic ideas take content that's already performing well especially if it's ranking in google because it's so competitive and give it an upgrade how can you put your spin on it how can you expand that topic how can you um you know, infuse your expertise, your knowledge, your value proposition to provide a really good experience to the reader. And then in my professional opinion, you shouldn't worry about giving away too much. And so I was in a cons consult one time and the, you know, the prospective customer was like, well, I don't want to give all of my secrets away, right? And to me, I show my cards. I want to show you everything. I want you to know what value I bring to the table because the DIYers of the world are not my target audience. The DIYers are going to do it by themselves no matter what, okay? So I want to show the people who are going to outsource it to somebody who knows how to do it efficiently, effectively, really well, get good results. I don't want the people who are trying to ride that learning curve. I want to connect with the people who need to know that I know my stuff. So I show my cards, okay? The next step is to perform research. You want to look for keywords that your audience is using. So keywords are the basis of driving organic traffic. And by organic traffic, I mean free leads. Um, you want to speak your audience's language. You want to avoid technical jar jargon. And a lot of times we get in our zone of genius and our area of expertise and we start throwing out these words to make ourselves feel good and sound smart and make people think that we really know what we're talking about. Well, that's not the content that's going to get shown in the search engines, okay? So you've got to figure out what keywords your audience is using to describe your product or service, your expertise, that pain, need, want, challenge that they are looking for, okay? So Keywords Everywhere is a tool that I would recommend. It's a Chrome browser extension that you can use, and when you type in a Google search, it's going to um, come up on the side of your Google page with all of the keywords that you should be using to describe that topic, and it's going to give you the data about you know your search volume and what it would cost to use that keyword in a paid ad for example it's a really powerful tool so do your keyword research and then the second thing you want to know is what does the audience want to know so then you want to aim to answer those questions as many as, the, as you can in your long form um, content piece so let's dive into the execution so you start with developing content according to your defined marketing channels i would recommend starting with a long form um, type of content now for you this may be a blog post 
if you prefer to write. This may be a video if you prefer to just jump on and have kind of a general outline of what you want to talk about. Or it may be dictating. I know Leanne does this a ton with her content. She's fantastic at talking. So she just starts talking and she dictates what's going through her mind and she turns that into her long form um, content piece, okay? So for the first one, it might be a blog. For the second one, it might be a YouTube video. For the third example, it might be a podcast, okay? So do start with the medium that works best for your personality and how you process these ideas. And then you're gonna take that piece of content and here's what you're gonna do. By the way, let me back up a second. For blog posts, anything under 500 words is gonna get you not ranked in the Google search um, algorithm in the search engine results pages because Google has earned 70% of market share because they've figured out what makes a great experience and they want somebody to be able to land on your blog post and get all of the questions answered. That's what makes a great experience. So the longer the better. Um, and that gives you opportunities as the content creator to infuse that blog post with different keywords, keyword phrases, um, synonyms that really tell Google what that page is about. So the longer the better. The average first search engine results number one um, place had an average of 2,400 words. So I would suggest, I know that's a lot, I would suggest words, anywhere between 1,000 and 1,500 words. If that sounds torturous to you, maybe break it up over a few days, but definitely shoot for those long form um, blogs. And so then you take that blog post and you turn it into perhaps social media options. Take an excerpt from your blog, pull up your Hootsuite or your social media scheduler, whatever you use, tweak those captions so that they make sense according to whatever um, that post is going to be about. You might have to re, um, rearrange the words or say things a little bit differently to sound good on that specific platform. Um, but the, the ideas are there, right? Like the, for the most part, your content is there. So paste those captions in for social media. Now that you've done the research and you've figured out what you're going to talk about and you've really articulated a very thorough topic, go ahead and record it into a YouTube video and put it up on your YouTube channel. Break it into a multi-part email series. So maybe one blog post might get you three weekly emails and it's a three-part series teaching them how to X, Y, Z. There, you've got your email content, okay? Um, Create a downloadable info sheet or checklist so that they have a branded piece that they can take with them after they leave your website. Turn that blog post into an evergreen webinar that somebody might want to opt into your email list to receive that information through a webinar. People like to consume information in different types of formats and mediums. So maybe webinars are gonna resonate with more people. Um, turn it into a presentation or workshop at your local library or chamber, not what I'm doing here, but it's a great idea. Go live and do a live video series on Facebook and Instagram. If you did that and you hadn't done the YouTube videos, you could then turn those live videos into your YouTube content. That's a, that's a double whammy right there. Um, turn them into FAQs on your website. So you've already done your keyword research. Go ahead and repurpose it on your website. You, this is probably the one that you'll have to tweak the verbiage the most. But again, the topics are there, the keywords are there, the content is there, the ideas are there. Go ahead and repurpose that um, where appropriate. Put it in your Google business listing post. If you are a local business and you could get local traffic and you do not have your Google business listing, I would say put that on your list for doing that today. It is so powerful for, for local businesses. Um, make your blog post as part of a larger ebook. So maybe take five different blog posts and combine it into an ebook and use that as a lead magnet on your website. Walk potential leads through the process of a discovery call on their own. So invite them into a 15 minute discovery call, applying that blog content to their specific situation. And then you have that one-on-one -on -one contact. Turn that post into a podcast of your own. So now that you have all the ideas, go ahead and start a podcast. Um, and then the final thing is to use it as a press kit for a podcast host. So you reach out to people who have podcasts of their own and you say, hey, I can talk about XYZ on your podcast. And then you get opened up to all of their audience. Okay. And maybe you do that for 10 different podcasts and you reuse that one blog post to go and reach the audiences of 10 different podcasts. 
posts. So I hope this has started to kind of spur some ideas in your, of your own. I know I got to wrap up here. I'm going to skip pro tips. You can go back to those on your own um, after this. And then I also have a resources slide here that's going to mention all of the resources that I talked about within this presentation. And here's my information if you need it. Catherine, I, know I went over my time and we've got to open it up for Q&A. Thank you so much for joining today. I hope this clarified the process a little bit and I'd love to answer your questions. Yeah, does anyone have questions you wanna drop into the chat box or into the Q&A? Yeah, there's a lot of a lot to, to digest there. So <laughs> thanks, Nick. Yeah, thank you. I'm looking at the attendee list now. Thank you so much for joining. Well, it looks like we don't have any new questions coming in. Um, but do you have any parting thoughts or insights to share um, before no. we sign out? Nope, I'll just put this information up. I'm available for conversation all the time. I love getting, whoops, I love getting conversations going in email, um, on the phone. So I just welcome you to reach out to me. I'd love to be a resource for you. Um, and good luck in your business. It's never been a crazier time. So this community is rallying around small business owners right now, and I love it. Thank you, Catherine, too, for the opportunity. Thanks so much for being with us today. So I just want to say a couple more things. Um, and I think when I talk, it's gonna make your slide disappear. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and share um, this one one more time. Um, so next week, there we go. Next week, um, we'll be hearing from Rebecca Bledsoe of Dale Carnegie Training of Greater Illinois, and she'll be sharing ways to create connections through networking. Um, Kathy, Kelly Lapopo of Edward Jones will also speak briefly at the beginning of that session. And you can find the link to attend at chillypld.org or in the event on Chillicothe Public Library's Facebook page. So thanks again for everyone to, for turn, tuning in. And when I go ahead and close the event, those of you attending through Zoom will be prompted to fill out a survey. If you'd like to enter to win a prize, please do fill out and submit that survey, making sure to include your name and contact information. And remember, you can enter every time you attend one of these sessions. So thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon and take care. Thank you.